In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Well, we all know what today is, don't we? Groundhog Day! <laughs> According to the old Scottish saying, if Calamus Day is bright and clear, there'll be two winters in the year. I thought I was going to say Super Bowl Sunday. <laughs> In England, it said, If Candlemas be fair and bright, winter has another flight. If Candlemas brings clouds and rain, winter will not come again. And from Germany, For as the sun shines on Candlemas Day, so far will the snow swirl until May. <laughs> For as the snow blows on Candlemas Day, so far will the sun shine before May. Candlemas. How many have heard that term before? Anybody? Well, not quite half of us. Candlemas is a feast with many names. The old prayer book, the 1928 Book of Common Prayer, called it the purification of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Our new prayer book, Seems kind of ironic that we say new. Their 79 prayer book, the current one, as well as your bulletin, calls it the Feast of the Presentation, or the Presentation of Christ in the Temple. But of course, in America, we know it better as... Brown Hall Day! Day. <laughs> oh, people work with me! <laughs> the day that Phil comes out of hibernation looking for his mate, and if he sees its shadow, it means six more weeks of winter. Now I understand up in Pennsylvania it was a little cloudy this morning, so Phil didn't see. But I've been outside. We may have six more weeks of this weather. It's supposed to be 60 degrees this afternoon, so I'm in favor of that winter. But what's the real meaning of this day? The Old Testament instructs us that 40 days after the birth of a child, the mother was to present an offering at the temple for purification. It goes all the way back to Leviticus chapter 12. And while we in our current, current situation may have our own thoughts about why would a new mother need to do this, it's good for us to know that in our old prayer book, the 28th prayer book, our church had a service called the Churching of Women, which echoed those roots from Leviticus. And with the new prayer book, our current 79 Book of Common Prayer, this service was rewritten and it's entitled now, A Thanksgiving for the Birth of a Child. Think about that. That liturgy in our 79 Book of Common Prayer under a different title goes all the way back Leviticus chapter 12. At the time of Jesus, if a newborn child happened to be the firstborn son, the parents were to go to the temple and dedicate their child to God. Again, this has its roots all the way back in Exodus. For Jesus, this 40th day after the birth, which was we celebrate the 25th of December, falls on today, February 2nd. And in our gospel this morning, we heard the account of when Jesus, Mary, and Joseph went to the temple in Jerusalem to offer the appointed prayers and sacrifice. And we also learned that as they were leaving the temple, Simeon is there. He holds the Christ child in his arms and says those familiar words that we pray and hear every night in evening prayer. Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen your salvation, which you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the Gentiles and the glory of your people, Israel. Then Mary and Joseph gather up Jesus and continue on their way out of the temple, and immediately after this, this holy family encounters Anna, the prophetess, who declares to all her, without being bashful whatsoever, declares loud enough for all to hear that this child is the salvation of God. Candlemas. Candlemas takes 
place halfway between the first day of winter and the first day of spring. And because of those words from Simeon about light, people came to see the feast of the presentation as a day to celebrate the return of the light. And then they adopted this name that I use this morning, Candlemas. Processions of joyful people, pilgrims, they would gather their candles and, and, and they would leave the church. Throughout Europe this would take place. They'd depart their churches and they'd process through the town with their candles lit, representing the light of Christ. And eventually, over time, all the candles that were to be used in the church as well as homes were brought into the church on that day of the year, and they were blessed. Candlemas. Consider the candle. Consider how we use the candle. The candle is a sign of the fire of the Holy Spirit. The flame from the candle reflects the joy of resurrection. Resurrection grace, the resurrection of Jesus. We light that Paschal candle back there by the baptismal font each time there is a baptism. And then we light it at every service throughout the season of Easter. This candle signifies the light of Christ. The deacon comes in at the Easter vigil, and what do you say? The light of Christ. Three times. The light of Christ. And when someone is baptized, we give them a brand new candle that's alive with a flame from the Paschal candle. Candles represent the light of the Word of God. On our altar, we have two candles. One representing the light of the Old Testament and one representing the light of the New Testament. While the Gospel book is placed and lies right between the two candles, right next to the sacrament. Those candles figuratively bringing light to the liturgy of the Eucharist. The flame of the candle serves to remind us of how pure and heartfelt our prayer is meant to be as it scatters the darkness of night and despair when we enter into prayer with our Heavenly Father. Candlemas. Candlemas is the third and the final feast of light. The first was Christmas, the Nativity. The second was the Epiphany. And then today, February 2nd, the presentation of Jesus in the temple, Candlemas. These three feasts keep our focus on the Christ child, the light that has finally come into the world. You will recall, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. And John said of him, in him was life, and the life was the light of all humankind. And again, Jesus says, while you have the light, believe in the light, so that you may become sons and daughters of the light. On this candlemas day, this Feast of the Presentation, this Groundhog's Day. May we join with Simeon and Anna and declare that Jesus is our salvation, our life, our light. And may we, as the pilgrims of old, as we depart this building today, may we leave with our hearts ablaze, on fire, as we carry forth the light of Christ, as we carry that light of Christ into the darkness of this world that surrounds us, and may we eagerly, eagerly share it with those who are in darkness and those who are lost. Happy Candlemas. <clears throat>